Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. So between episodes, I've been doing a bunch of crafting here to try to get to the end of this chapter. Last episode, we managed to automate the tier 3 essences and reagents. There is still one or two items that we're missing auto crafting for in Blood Magic, such as being able to complete our passive automation of the tier 1 essences, but these do require some more blood orbs and automated LP generation. And to get to that point, we need to do some progress through chapter 17. Which now, after crafting the items in the intro, has actually been unlocked for us. But there is still one or two things we have to do here to finish out chapter 15. So between episodes, I crafted up the last of the promises. And this thing was actually like hundreds of thousands of millibuckets of blood. In fact, I swapped out the tank here holding the evil craft blood with a black hole tank. And this holds a lot of fluid. <laughs> but those two extra promises let us craft the ring. And this is the next steps for us. So we need to make these blocks of ender. And to do that, we need to trap an enderman in this box. So I'm not 100% sure how this works. I think we have to somehow put this down and then fire at the enderman. Or maybe it has to be an enderman spirit. So I'm told that this actually does work without the ring. It's just that you can't see the spirit. So you have to kind of aim wherever the enderman dies. This may take a few tries though. I don't know if there's some sort of animation for when he's trapped in the box. Okay, it says the contents here is a vengeance spirit. Although on the recipe here, it says that it requires Enderman. So I don't know if that changes on the tooltip or if it's just a discrepancy within JEI. I wonder if we can release this. Oh, we can. Oh, this might be working actually. Yeah, he's right about here. Yeah, I just have to stand in the correct spot. Did that work? Do we have our Enderman? We do have our Enderman. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not going to question that. <laughs> the alternative to that not working was having to craft this uh, Pearson Vengeance Focus, which you may have to do at some point. However, this takes Potentia, which takes the next tier of Catalysts. And I didn't actually realize we would have to get into this, but we need the Iron Crystals, which is the whole mechanism 5x ore processing. So you have to do Slurry, which comes from Sulfuric Acid, uh, Sulfur Trioxide, Sulfur Dioxide, yada yada. <laughs> So I think at some point we will have to set that up, but uh, I was hoping to avoid that today, but it looks like we can get around that and start Batania. Alright, so now we just need four Orbis Terra, which we have on Autocraft, and we can make our first block of Ender. I don't know how many of these things we need, hopefully only one though. It looks like it did consume the box there though. Oh nice, this gives us a free promise of tenacity as well. But yeah, this also unlocks Ender Crafters. So to make the Ender Crafter we need five of these ingots from the block we just crafted, three ender alloy advanced, which we have automated by now, and a basic crafting table. And we also need at least one ender alternator for this, which is going to take another power core. <laughs> oh, these things take forever with our current setup. So yeah, the ender alloys we can just request from our ME system. These extended crafting tables we have on auto craft as well. And after crafting a spare power core, we can now get our ender alternator. Oh, are we going to have enough ender ingots for this? Yeah, we need five. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we need a few more ender alloys though. And there is our quest. Oh, another dread crystal. Well, yeah, that was the last unlock on chapter 15. There is one or two more quests here we're going to come back for. But now let's finally move from chapter 15 and I guess we're skipping 16. Uh, we can make the seeds for these things now that we have access to the ender crafter. But I think we will circle back for 16 later on as we don't get access to all of the seeds right away. So yeah, first let's try to craft this petal apothecary. Also, now that we've unlocked this Ender Crafter, we're going to be using it quite a lot in the future here. Especially to craft all of the future mystical agriculture seeds. So we might as well set up a little space for it. So I've uh, expanded out this area next to this ink farm. And we're going to place it right about here. So if I remember right, this thing is super slow. <laughs> so we're definitely going to want more Ender Alternators at some point. But for now, one is all we have. So let's encode the recipe for this thing. Oh, actually, I just realized this thing takes petals, which means that we need to create some Batania flowers. All right, well, to do that, we need some Laurel Fertilizer, which in this pack is made in the Hellfire Forge with Wizard's Reagent. This is actually one of the easier ones, <laughs> so that's not bad. Uh, growth Reagent is also one of the easier ones now that we have all of this farmed. Slime Balls and Bone Meal. So we can just encode recipes for this. And we'll craft, I don't know, 16 to begin with. Oh, we're missing Amber. An amber we can get from ore, and if I recall correctly, we're actually not processing any of the amber ore. Yeah, we have 9,000 ore here. <laughs> Let's just smelt down a couple of stacks of this stuff. All right, so we got 16 floral fertilizer. I have a feeling this won't be enough though, <laughs> but the way this works is we have to plant this on grass. It's similar to a bone meal effect, but this will give us a variety of botania flowers. And so we're looking for one of each color. And once we have one of each, we can turn these into petals plant the petals and then bone meal these into tall flowers and then if we use shears to break them we actually get two back 
or no, we get the tall flower back, which we can craft it into four petals. And this will give us basically infinite petals here. But this is definitely something we'll want to automate. Had to craft a little bit more fertilizer, but we now have one of each of these Batania flower colors. I'm going to make probably a couple of stacks of each color of petal. And then we can look into the Petal Apothecary. Alright, so I crafted up the Tempest Core. We have our clean runic plates, which we crafted last episode. And we can now make our Petal Apothecary. It looks like this Ender Crafter is the one that you have to power. The start of something peaceful. <laughs> Indeed. So the Petal Apothecary is another crafting mechanic within Batania. Absolutely something else we'll want to automate. However, before all of that, we're going to need a space for Batania. It seems the base will grow once again. <laughs> Alright, so this is our new Batania area. I'm not 100% sold on this slimy dirt. It may change back to regular grass. But I thought it'd be cool for a little bit of a change in colour. So I have also run an applied energistics connection, which comes from the main line in that door over there. Then we just have this running to about, I think it's this block here, and then it runs straight this way. And then we'll branch off for whenever we need some channels. I'm thinking this area at the back here is going to be for pure daisy automations. And there's actually three that we need in this pack. And then I've just started setting up the basic petal apothecary automation. Alright, so the first thing we have to make with this apothecary is the pure daisy. I don't think there's much of a point in putting a recipe in for it, since we only need to make three of these things, I think. There is multiple recipes here, but some of them are uh, duplicate recipes. And some are kind of irrelevant, like soul sand to sand. We really don't need to do this. But to get the pure daisy, we need some reagents, some uh, essences, and petal of the daisy. So yeah, to craft with this Petal Apothecary, we have to drop the items in and then drop a seed. And that will give us our Petal of the Daisy. Then we combine our reagents and the petals in the Fae Crafter. And we got our Pure Daisies. We can claim our Lexica Batania, which is the documentation for Batania. And I think at this point, we do want to automate the Pure Daisy, as it is kind of slow. It takes a minute per recipe. And I don't know if there's any way to speed that up. So these things have a 3x3 three three radius, and after 60 seconds they will convert any block around them. So we want living wood, living matter, and living rock. The living wood in this pack can only be made by certain types of wood. I don't know if there's any here that we already farm. Uh, oh, it looks like we can use eucalyptus wood. Eucalyptus, but this is Natura eucalyptus wood. Yeah, this is Erebus eucalyptus wood. I'm not sure if they can convert between them. Let's try it out here. Although the fact that we're not getting particles here is not a good sign. <laughs> I don't think we can use this type of wood. Well, in that case, we're going to add the twilight oak saplings to our tree farm here. As for the living rock, I think we're going to use abyssal stone. And this is the same stuff that we're using for the slate in our blood altar. And then as for the living matter, this has to come from various types of dirt, actually. And I actually don't think we have any of these dirts. So I think right now I'm just going to vein mine a bunch of uh, dirt from the aether. And we'll use this to start off with. And we'll figure something out later on. Alright, so I don't really want to admit how long this took me, but we have our pure daisy automations here. Normally I like to use integrated dynamics for the setup, but the, the recipe for the exporter takes a block placer each. And that is quite expensive, so, so I decided just to use applied energistics instead. And it's raining again. <laughs> Alright, so the way this works is we have two different subnets here. The first one handles the annihilation planes, which break the blocks around the pure daisy. And then underneath we have the formation planes, which will place the blocks. These two planes are on separate subnets. And when you're setting this up, just be careful not to connect both of the networks together. So this cable here is from the main connection on the P2P here. And then we have a storage bus on the drawer controller for the outputs. And this is also connected to our main, main line here. To import all of the items, we're using the interfaces also connected to our main ME network. The one on the left is for Aether Dirt, which is what these formation planes are filtered for. 
The middle one is for Abyssal Stone, which is what the middle ones are filtered for. And the one on the right is for the Twilight Oak. Connected to those interfaces, we have Import Buses, which will import it into this different subnet here. And the Import Buses don't transmit channels, so it keeps the main network separate from this network. But you do have to still transport power. So we have uh, this cable on the bottom connected with quartz fiber. And then there's also another power connection up here for the top subnet. So then once the items are placed and converted, they're then broken by the annihilation plane. And then all the items end up into this storage bus connected to this drawer network. But because I have uh, drawer downgrades in there, they're not being broken right now. So if we take all of those out, after a second, <laughs> it updates, uh, breaks the living matter and places more dirt. And in fact, we'll do this for each one. So yeah, this will just keep running until there's no more space in the drawer. And you have to just make sure that you have locked drawers here. Otherwise, what would happen is if we were not to put this annihilation plane on a subnet, it would keep placing aether dirt and then breaking the aether dirt and then place more aether dirt. And that's how you get a game crash. <laughs> so because these are locked, it's only going to break the these items here. So I hope the explanation of that kind of made sense. <laughs> um, it did actually take me quite a while to get this figured out with all the subnets and things. So yeah, with that all made, I think we can move on to the next stage in the quest book. So we've unlocked the runic Aller, but this does take mana. Uh, so that means we have to generate some mana first. And I think the only option we have at the moment is to do Endo Flames. And the Endo Flame recipe is a similar one to the Pure Daisy. We need some more reagents, some more essences, and Petal of the Inner Flame, which is just different colour of petals here. So let's actually try out our Apothecary Automation. When we're importing the recipes for these things, since we want the seeds to be dropped last, I think it runs in order from left to right, top to bottom. So if we put them in the last slot, it should be the last one to be dropped by the precision dropper. So we'll put it in this interface, make sure it's on blocking mode. Oh, I had the magnet on. That's <laughs> that's not going to work like that. I think there is something in Britannia actually to stop the magnet. Okay, let's try this again. So if we request one of these things, drops one of each, and then the seed, yeah. Although what happens if we request more than one of these things? If we request two, is it going to work? Yeah, it does work. Nice. So we can just craft a vacuum hopper to collect the outputs of this thing. And we can even put it right here actually, and then set this to up. And that should send all the items back into the interface to complete the craft. So now we can fake craft our endo flames. So even though these endo flames are just going to be temporary, I think I actually want to try out the the TNT generating flower in this pack. I've never actually played with that one before. But yeah, even though these are temporary, I think we still want to set up some sort of automation. Before we do that though, we definitely need a sound muffler here. <laughs> this thing is way too loud. So yeah, to automate the endo flames, we need to drop blocks of coal. The endo flames will consume the coal and generate us some mana. So to do that, we're once again going to use this dropper. And this time, instead of allowing it to drop any items that are placed in the inventory, we want this on pulse mode, so that it will only drop on a redstone signal. We're then going to hook up another interface to supply the coal blocks. Oh man, there's been so many unknown problems occurring <laughs> because I've opened that uh, sound muffler GUI there. Actually, we're going to move this interface down a block so that we can limit a item filler inside the precision dropper. Alright, but before we start dropping blocks of coal here, I just have a basic timer set up. I don't actually know the timer settings on this yet. I think the endo flames may have been tweaked, and it also depends on how many you have. So we'll configure that in a second. But we also need somewhere for the mana to go. So for that we need a mana pool, which takes some living rock, we have this now automated, and aqua Salus, which is made in the alchemy table. I guess we'll also need some mana spreaders, which take magical cores. Oh, these are kind of expensive actually. Uh, Glod crystal blocks, that's easy though. And living wood. But one other thing we're going to need for this is a wand of the forest. And the mana pool cost is actually is actually not too bad. It's just Aqua Salus takes lily pads, which we don't quite have automated yet. We are getting a tiny amount from our fisher. Actually, we have 600 of these here. <laughs> this is a lot more than what I thought. So let's actually go with uh, 12 mana pools to start with. We'll probably end up making a lot more than this. We'll have some as a battery for mana. And then we'll use uh, one for a lot of these crafting recipes. There is 44 pages here, so uh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff to automate with mana. And as for the mana spreaders, it looks like we have enough for four right now, which should be enough for us to get started with. So unlocking those quests has now unlocked the ability for us to make all of these uh, mana items. These I think are all made in mana infusion. Yes, yeah, so we have to drop various different items inside the mana pool. One of these being mana diamonds, which we set up last time with the automation of our hyper diamonds. Uh, there's also mana quartz, and I believe there's actually a whole rabbit hole with quartz here. 
yeah, we have to dip it in fire water, we get blaze quartz, and then from there we make red quartz, and then sunny quartz, elven quartz, and it just keeps going here, <laughs> lavender quartz, and I think lavender might be the last one. But yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be a fun rabbit hole to jump down. But first, let's get our mana situation set up. So because this is temporary, I've placed it in this place that I know we're going to tear this thing down. So it doesn't really matter the configuration we have these. But we'll have a mana pool right here for the output of the endo flames. And then we just have to shift right click to connect to a mana spreader. So now this endo flame is linked to this mana spreader. And then we link the spreader to the mana pool. And in fact, we'll do another spreader here just to speed it up. And the other two on the other side will be linked to this top one. And then I've moved the timer below so that when the coal is dropped, this timer will turn off and not drop any more coal. So we just have to turn this back on. Blocks of coal are consumed. And we should start seeing mana in this mana pool any second now. Yeah, nice. Looks like the mana spreaders are not able to keep up with two of these things though. Yeah, I switched it around so that we're using one spreader per endo flame here. And that seems to keep the spreaders empty, which is what we're after. But actually, before we craft this runic altar, the ingredients for all the crafts on this thing looks like it's going to take a lot more of our blood magic essences and reagents. So I'd like to flesh out our crafting capabilities over here just a little bit more than we already have. We still can't get automated LP or will generation yet, but I would like to at least get a blood orb for each of these setups. So since they're all tier 1 essences, we could just go for the weak blood orb, but this takes a dread catalyst each. And that is actually probably the most expensive one to do here. So instead we'll just probably do the apprentice blood orb. Or maybe even the Magician. I wonder what's cheaper, doing this with all the Dark Power Gems and Refined Coralium, or making a bunch of Icy Cores and Undead Logs. You know what, I think the Magician is probably a bit easier to craft, let's do this instead. So we're going to need 6 Iron Promise Acceptors, but luckily we do have a lot of blood backed up by now. Oh, there's another five, nearly 530,000 blood in the Black Hole Tank. Yeah, so we have about a million blood in total. So we need to craft another 6 of these Blood Cores. We're missing, actually, a lot of Aqua Sailors. <laughs> that is a lot of Aqua Sailors. Um, other than that, though, it actually doesn't seem too bad. And the way we have these alchemy tables set up, it isn't really the fastest thing in the world. But once we have enough blood orbs to keep one in each alchemy table, this will be passive. So it's I think it's going to be plenty fast enough. And just to speed this up a bit, I think I'll add an on-demand crafting recipe for Aqua Sailors. Alright, we got four of the six blood cores we need. The only problem is this takes 25,000 LP per blood orb. And that's going to be a lot of sacrifices, <laughs> even with the incense altar here. Man, this pack is getting grindy. <laughs> it's very, very important to get your automations absolutely nailed in this. So I think because of that, I was going to jump straight to the runic altar. But having a look at some of these rune recipes, pretty much all of them require some sort of uh, mana infusion first. A lot of them take mana steel and mana powder. So instead of rushing the runic altar, I think we're actually going to automate every single input item for these things. Oh, and I realised that putting this Aquasalus recipe in is actually broken, <laughs> because we don't have the bucket extract on this specific alchemy table. Alright, we finally got the six frozen blood cores, we just have to dip these in 25,000 life essence each. And finally, <laughs> blood orb number six. So this means we can put one in each alchemy table, and this will passively produce us the essences that we want. Right now we only have them limited to one stack of each. And we also have one in here for the on-demand crafts, and then I guess I made an extra one. But these are going to be for the crafting recipes, such as all of the cores. So yeah, now let's look at all of the input items for the mana pools. First one is mana steel with mithril ingots, but we do already have passive mithril. So that brings us on to the mana pearls, which is flukes pearls, and this takes flukes crystals. Oh, actually, there is flukes essence, which means there's flukes seeds. It may be a while before we can get this though, as this is a tier 3 seed, which means we have to go all the way through Thomcraft. So let's just automate the flukes, it'll be a fun little project to do I think. Alright so we now have automated flukes crystals. I did have a go at doing this passively but it took me way too long. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so right now we're just doing it on demand. So we just have an interface to supply the pattern. That is pointed into the precision dropper. And to make flukes we need to drop redstone, nether quartz and charged cerus into water. And this will instantly transform it into flukes crystals which is picked up by the ranged collector. And then the item conduit puts it back into the interface here. So yeah, this is just a semi-temporary setup until we have the fluke seeds. So yeah, now that we have the flukes, we can auto-craft the flukes pearls. So for this setup, we're just going to use a crafter here at our new automation wall. <laughs> this is going to fill up very quickly. But we're just going to have a drawer for output. And then I think we'll actually have a new interface over here. So here we want to ask for Osmeridium, which I think we have on passive already. Ender pearls, which we should have a very large amount of by now. 
and Fluix, which isn't passive, but it will be once we get the seeds. And then we'll limited item filter into the crafter, and then we'll need one for output as well. So we'll output on blue, as always. So then we can set our recipe here for Flux Pearls. We can block the output inventory, and then set our drawer. And I think we will put a storage downgrade on this one. One stack is gonna be plenty, especially since we don't have that much, uh, oh, there's some quests. Especially since we don't have that much mana production right now. So yeah, that's what, three input items down. The next one is Mana Infused String, which takes gold string. This should just be another simple crafting recipe. So one more crafter. This is taking me back to the Omni Factory days where I had hundreds of these mechanical crafters. And of course we already have Glod on passive and we're also farming string. Oh, wait a sec, apparently we don't have any Glod. Hmm, why don't we have any Glod? That's very strange. We should have Glod here. Oh, we do have Glod, it's just a different version. Yeah, the one in JEI for some reason has white text and the one in their crafting terminal has gold text. I really don't know why that is. It's probably some content tweaker thing. It just means we have to manually put in the item here. Set the recipe for golden string and configure the drawer. Once again with the storage downgrade. All right, we're more than halfway there actually. Next one is mana glass, which is hardened enderium glass. So last episode we added hardened glass to our passive wall. I don't think we passive enderium blend though. No, we have Enderium ingots and Enderium base, but we don't have the blend on passive. So our machine wall grows once again. <laughs> we'll start with a pulverizer, and we'll also need an induction smeller. So that is Enderium blend. I think we also have to add this to the interface down here. And hardened glass. And now we have hardened Enderium glass on passive. And also Enderium blend. Is there any other use for this stuff? Doesn't look like there is. Our only option is to make glass or cook it into ingots. So actually, instead of outputting to a drawer here, we're just going to output to the top, and that will go straight to the induction smeller. Oh, and we're also getting rich slag from this. Well, in that case, we're just going to add an extract filter on the left-hand side that we're inputting from, and we'll just dump all of this back into our drives. Actually, you know what? We're going to keep this drawer here, because I don't want this induction smeller filling with both slots of Enderium Blend, in case for whatever reason we run out of one item or the other. Doing it this way means that we can uh, make use of the limited item filter on the side here. So yeah, that is one more item off our list here. <laughs> the quartz, actually we already have quartz here, so that just leaves mana powder. And for this we need photovoltaic composite, which takes energized dark dust, crushed lapis, silicon and RF powder. And I believe all of those inputs we actually have passive already. Energized dark dust we have here. I think we use this for conduit binder. Crushed lapis should be over here somewhere. Maybe we don't buffer crushed lapis though. Yeah, it's in this crusher, although we're not buffering it, so we need to add some sort of a drawer somewhere. How are we going to squeeze that in here? Um, well, we could just have its own little drawer on the top, but that means we'll need to storage bus this. And instead of outputting from the bottom here, we can just request it in the interface down here, as I believe it's used in this crafter for something or another. Uh, yeah, it's used in industrial dye blend here. So yeah, we'll change the output from the bottom here to eject the top, and then hopefully we have still some channels on this line. I don't know what this is connected to. Is this this side or this side? Definitely next pack, I'm going to be making changes to the way I do automations and leaving more space than this. <laughs> All right, looks like it's on this side of the base. Actually, no, it's, it's connected to this interface, which means it's on this side. Oh boy. <laughs> so we can storage bus on the back of this. All right, so that should mean we've got everything for the composite here. We're going to do one more crafter, one more drawer output. You can set our recipe, downgrade the drawer, and we're done. And in all that time, it looks like we've built up quite a decent chunk of mana here that we can use. So let's see if we can complete out this quest. And also remember what the input items are. <laughs> so foreign hardened enderium glass. Mithril was one of them. This is a memory test here. Uh, golden string. Quartz was another one. And I'm struggling to remember the rest. <laughs> Hyper diamonds. And the composite. Is that the last one? I think so. So we just have to throw this in the mana pool. The quartz. The string. Mana glass, mana diamonds, oh and we're missing the pearls. There's our quest. Alright, so this now opens up, what is this, Wildwood Blocks? I think this is the next Divine RPG dimension. And to get this, it's a lot of mana diamonds. That, yeah, I don't know if we have enough mana for that. That's probably something we'll explore next episode. We also unlock the ability to make beacons. This is just vanilla beacons, but we need these to upgrade our blood altar. The altar we have right now is tier 3. I'm not sure what the tier 4 altar caps are, but the tier 5 is the beacon. However, to craft the beacon, we're going to need 4 radiant beacons. And this requires some stuff from the autumn dimension. And I didn't expect to have to go back there, but it looks like we're going to have to do a bit more exploring in autumn. We need 2 hearts per beacon and the heart of Ra. 
I don't know if that involves killing some more bosses or anything. So I think all of that exploration is something we'll save for tomorrow. Uh, I would like to finish off today though by crafting our runic altar. So this is going to take some more earthen cores, some living matter which we have automated, living rock we have automated, and two more incense altars. Actually, can we just request two more incense altars? We're just missing some aether, okay. And we're missing aether because we don't have any more simple catalysts, and we don't have simple catalysts because we don't have sugar. Oh, so I guess this answers the question of last episode, do we have sugar on passive? <laughs> and the answer looks like no. We must have run through all 2000 of that sugar that we crafted. So we're going to add one more crafter for sugar. And I know there is technically more efficient ways to get this. We could have crushered it for three each, but I mean sugar cane is basically free from our farming station over there. So I think it's just easier using the crafter. So now we can request our two more incense altars. And we'll need recipes for these earthen cores. Which looks like we can request here as long as we have enough uh, will in the tartaric gem. I haven't filled that thing in a while and I'm aware of it getting quite low. And it looks like we've also filled the drawer on living rock and living wood. The living matter has run out probably because of the aether dirt. Um, so I'm actually still not sure what we should do about this. If you guys have any suggestions, uh, leave it in the comments. But now we can get our runic altar. I'm really happy to have finished out chapter 15. This was a very long one. <laughs> it was very fun though, trying to get all of these essences. And of course, there's still some more optimizations we have to do with those. So actually, tomorrow I was thinking about doing another live stream, where hopefully we can progress a little bit more through Batania. And I guess we'll also check out the Autumn Dimension and maybe even Divine RPG as well. So yeah, thank you again for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for some more Divine Journey 2.